Polish Grom, Special Forces, let's go. Ah, oh, I love videos like this. JW Grom, Poland. JW Grom or Military Unit Grom, named in honor of the silent unseen of the Home Army as one of Poland's premier special missions units. Grom operators gained the nickname of the surgeons, due to their extensive medical training and knowledge and their surgical ability to coordinate and execute special operations. Grom was originally modeled on NATO's Tier 1 special operations units such as the U.S. Army's Delta Force, the U.S. Navy's SEAL Team 6, Dev Group, and the British Army's SAS. Straight off the bat, their kit and equipment looks to the next level, it really does. I've heard some good things about the Grom Polish Special Forces for some time now, and this is the very first time I'm actually reacting to it. Nice. Which stands for Grupa Regao and I Operacano Manuro Ego, or in English, Group for Operational Maneuvering Response, which also means Thunder, is one of the five Special Operation Forces units of the Polish Armed Forces. The unit was officially activated on July 13, 1990. It is deployed in a variety of special operations and unconventional warfare roles, including anti-terrorist operations and projection of force behind enemy lines. Okay, I didn't know this. I didn't know that Poland had five different special forces groups. Um, I've never ever heard about any other group apart from Grom. I mean, them. I don't know if they're the most famous or what, but I, I'm guessing because, you know, the majority of people have said Grom and the videos that pop up, it seems to be all about, you know, Polish uh, special forces Grom. Yeah, I'll have to have a look into the other four special forces and see what they're all about. But I'm guessing it's similar to the United States. You know, they've got different special forces for different jobs. The unit was named after the silent unseen. Poland's elite World War II Special Operations Unit. In the okay. 1970s and 1980s, there were several formations of special forces units within Poland, but these were either trained in purely military tasks such as sabotage, disruption of communications and such, or in purely counter-terrorist roles. After the Polish embassy in Bern was taken over by a group of four Polish emigrants calling themselves Polish Revolutionary Home Army in 1982, General Edwin Rose Lyubierski proposed that a clandestine military unit be established to counter the threat from terrorism and other unconventional threats. This proposal, however, was initially rejected by the People's Army of Poland. Okay. Yeah, so I'm guessing this is um, from World War II then, the Groms. Um, obviously, Poland was occupied by Germany back in the day, and you had small guerrilla groups, uh, you know, for sabotage, um, plant explosives on train lines, etc. So I'm guessing their type of role is, you know, cause as much disruption as possible without, you know, being seen. <laughs> That's my little guess. In 1989, many Jews were allowed to emigrate from the Soviet Union to Israel. Poland was one of the handful of countries that provided aid in the form of organization for the operation, later dubbed Operation Bridge. After two Polish diplomats were shot in Beirut, Lt. Col. Sławomir Pietlicki was sent to Lebanon to secure the transfer of civilians and the Polish diplomatic outposts. Upon his return to Poland, he presented his plan for the creation of a special military unit to the Ministry of Interior, 
a force that would be trained in special operations to be deployed in the defense of Polish citizens in situations similar to the one in Lebanon. Pete Lithi's ideas were well received, and on June 13, 1990, Rom was formally established as JW2305. Okay. Oh, I love the kit and equipment. Next level. Sławomir Pete Lichy was chosen as the first commander of the newly formed unit. As a Polish intelligence officer from SLU's the best piece since TWA specializing in sabotage and subversion, he seemed perfectly suited to oversee the unit's initial formation. He gathered around himself a group of like-minded and professional soldiers, functionaries and set about choosing soldiers that would be fit for special operations. Due to the high risks involved in special service, it was decided that all men should be from professional service. The first batch of recruits all came from a variety of already existing special units within the Polish Armed Forces. Interesting video. Actually, it tells you a lot of information. The training of Grom soldiers includes a variety of disciplines. All of them undergo the same specialized training in anti-terrorism and special operations, as well as frogmen, sniping, and parachuting. Okay. In four-man teams, each soldier must be prepared to assume the respective responsibilities of his colleagues, should it become necessary. J.W. Grom receives basic special operations training from the Swedish Navy Special Command for Tactical Operations based in Karlskrona, Sweden's primary naval base. Approximately 75% of Grom personnel are trained as medics or paramedics. In addition, each group is supported by several professional physicians. Grom soldiers are trained in capture or kill methods. Trade global markets with professional trading conditions, proactive tools and services. During the 2003 invasion of Iraq, Rom formed the part of the core of the Naval Special Operations Task Group, along with U.S. Navy SEALs, British Royal Marines and attached U.S. PSYOPs and civil affairs teams. On March 20, 2003, U.S. Marines from 1st FASD Company and Grom operators assaulted the Ka'at oil terminals, whilst U.S. Marines from 1st FASD Company and U.S. Navy SEALs from SEAL Team 8 and 10 seized the Mabat oil terminal. Both terminals were seized with no casualties and explosives which were found on the terminals were made safe by Grom and SEAL operators. Nice. Some next level shit this. I love it. <laughs> really good a mixed team of 35 Grom operators and 20 US Navy SEALs from SEAL Team 5 sees the Mukataiyin hydroelectric dam 57 miles northeast of Baghdad Iraqi troops guarding the dam surrendered without a fight there were no casualties to the team with the exception of one Grom soldier who broke an ankle during the insertion from a US Air Force MH 53J Pavlo helicopter SEAL and Grom units continued to cooperate throughout the rest of the invasion phase, with raids and anti-sniper missions in Baghdad. It's a really good video this, it's really informative, I like it. I've never really looked into the Grom before, it's only because you guys, the subscribers, are asking for me to look at certain, you know, special forces, different militaries. The more people ask me to do... Um, a certain reaction, you know, in regards to a different military, then I'm going to react to it, if that makes sense. You know, if there's 10 people of you guys ask me to, to do a certain reaction of a certain military, I'm going to do it. And this is the very first time in all of my years on YouTube that I've actually looked into the JW Grom, and I'm really, really enjoying it. I mean... Like I said at the beginning of the video, their kit and equipment, next level, um, you know, very much alike the SAS and all other special forces you really look at. You know, if you look at the kit, equipment, it's all the same pretty much. Uh, the training, I'm guessing, is pretty much the same as the SAS uh, because, you know, the special forces around the world bounce off each other, they, they train together. Following the invasion, 
ground operators formed the Corps of Task Unit Thunder, as an element of Combined Joint Special Operations Task Force Arabian Peninsula, providing a Tier 1 counter-terrorism unit for the task force. Along with Task Unit Raider, consisting of Dead 1 operators, both units became the task force's primary direct action assets, operating in conjunction on multiple occasions. After earlier successful tours of Iraq operating alongside U.S. Navy SEALs under direct U.S. command, in 2007, Grom and JW Commandoso were deployed to Kandahar. They weren't restricted by any national caveats the only restriction placed on them was regarding cross-border operations into Pakistan. Along with direct action successes, they were considered very effective in training and mentoring Afghan National Police units. As I already said, I've never really looked into the Polish Grom, but I should have done this a lot earlier because I'm very impressed. Kit and equipment, on par with everyone else pretty much, i.e. KSK, Navy SEALs, SAS, SBS, you know, their kit and equipment, top notch, next level. And the video itself, really informative. I'm really glad I found this to react on. Uh, I've gained a lot of knowledge. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below, if possible, in English, so I can actually reply to you guys. Um, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.